Hello, Namaste. Uh, welcome back uh, to the course on Geographic Information System. In this particular uh, module, we would be looking at uh, geographic systems as I spoke in my first lecture, where in this particular lecture, I would uh, look at elevation referencing, real, uh, relative referencing and discrete referencing in detail. And I would also, uh, this is extremely important when you are actually looking at any of your georeferencing system. So please be careful in understanding each and every aspect of it. I would also suggest uh, once you have seen this particular lecture, please read some of the materials that, that may be available online or yeah, there are few very good books on GIS which I have also already referred in my first uh, introductory lecture. Please read some of those books so that you are sure on what you have learned. So that is extreme, this part is very, very important in terms of when you are looking at uh, to become a GIS expert. Okay. So uh, in today's uh, uh, session, we would look at first elevation georeferencing, the relative georeferencing, then we would look at polar. So polar is a continuous kind of georeferencing, then we would look at discrete uh, georeferencing system, then uh, we would look at uh, decoding uh, the mailing address. So that uh, that is also very important in terms of how a particular uh, post or a parcel reaches us without even putting the entire the address maybe uh, in your envelope. Uh, for example, if I just say uh, my name with uh, the Indian Institute of Technology Karakpur and 721303, it reaches with uh, me without any hassle. So that means to say that there the entire mailing address has certain way of looking at it. So we will look at that. So just to uh, go back to the previous uh, so that we understand it much better. Uh, the first we started with what is georeferencing. We have two types of georeferencing we looked at. One is continuous uh, georeferencing, other one is the discrete georeferencing. When we look at the continuous system, we have relative georeferencing, other one is a direct georeferencing. When I look at relative georeferencing, we have polar, polar coordinate referencing. Whereas we look at the direct, refer, direct georeferencing, then we have elevation referencing, datums, coordinate systems and map projections. This is what we would look at in the next two, three classes of uh, this particular subject. Then we looked at uh, discrete uh, referencing. We also said how discrete referencing can be done. So this is what we learnt in my, our first lecture on uh, this particular uh, topic. Now let us go into each and every of the kind of this referencing and look at why it is important and how do we look at it. The first kind of referencing is elevation referencing. So for when, when, when we always consider any of the vertical referencing system, the zero point from an altitude system is based on the mean sea level. So when I say mean sea level, you have zero as a reference point. That's mean sea level is zero altitude. So based on that, you start to look at the vertical space. So that means this mean sea level is always a referencing point. So this area which, which through all the points at a zero altitude is called as a geoid. Okay? Please keep this in mind, this particular area which through all the points of the zero altitude of the earth surface is called as a geoid. Geoid is, a, is nothing but a zero altitude. We can even look at geoid in a, a better way. I will go on, I will explain it to you in the next slide. Zero point for elevation references is based on measurement of variations in the ocean oceanic surface. So that you should keep in mind. Yeah, so it is not just about uh, saying that this is the mean sea level, but you have to look at every references in terms of the oceanic surface and based on that the relatively you look at the zero point. Okay. So when I come to the geoid, geoid is affected by mass of earth. So there are lot of variations that you can see the geoid that you are measuring at one place to a geoid that you are measuring on the other place. Okay. Or the mean sea level, zero mean sea level that you are measuring on one size and the zero mean sea level that you are measuring on the other place. So geoid is affected by the mass of earth and therefore follows the earth contours. I spoke about what is a contour in my previous class. So it, it follows the earth contours upward at the mountains. Okay. So the, the way the contours flow, the upward direction, it also flows upward 
at the mountains where there is large amount of land mass and downward where there is a less land mass okay so uh, we have to understand this very clearly so it is the way the earth contours move if it is a mountain it moves like this then suddenly if there is a, a system where you have lower uh, references or you have a downward trend in the earth's surface it moves like this that's nothing but a geoid geoid can be also defined so it is normally geoid is the is your thinking okay geoid can be defined as a very hypothetical surface it's an hypothetical surface of the earth that is actually formed from the mean sea level and is in the continuation through the continents at the same level of the gravitational potential so now you should understand that gravitational potential also is involved in terms of defining a geoid okay so it is it is a continuous con continuous as the earth's surface follows the contours in and represents the entire mean sea level but maintains the same level of the gravitational force so look at the every aspect of it and one thing that you should remember is that geoid will never coincide with the rotational ellipsoid okay so if uh, if uh, the, otherwise it's not a called a geoid okay so to give you an example of a geoid on your right hand side uh, image that is uh, uh, from one of the sources here that's mentioned you can see this is a geoid of the earth's surface okay if you can see this is the earth's surface it is an a spheroid so geoid is something like this okay so you can see wherever there is a higher land mass you can see it is okay where there is actually it is going down you could see some changes here okay so it is it is where you have a zero mean say level so key, uh, this is the first concept that you have to understand then the second one is relative georeferencing so relative georeferencing is also a continuous georeferencing when you look at relative georeferencing it includes polar coordinates offset distance measurement along a road network so i'll get into each of these aspects in my next slides the first aspect is polar uh, georeferencing it is also called as an indirect georeferencing i spoke about polar in my uh, previous class so it is basically an indirect georeferencing what we do is that we consider uh, we do the measurements of a distance in relation to a reference point and the direction in relation to an axis that is usually north axis if we look at this particular image okay if we look this is uh, if uh, we have consider if this this is a north pole okay if that is a north pole that we have considered and this is the polaris okay with oh now we if we have to measure a particular point here with reference to this what is a distance then with reference to this what is the angle that it is making if you have an imaginary line so what is the angle that it is making is calculated that is nothing but a polar georeferencing that's how you reference that this point on the earth surface with respect to the north direction lies somewhere here okay so uh, that that's how you do a polar georeferencing okay now next next thing is offset distance so this is uh, this is also a kind uh, i mean a kind of a continuous georeferencing where offset distance methods will specify the location with either direction and the distance on only distances from the uh, or only distances from a specific object on the terrain so if for example if you are looking at a pipeline okay now these are the objects on the earth surface okay now you this offset distance method will specify the location of this particular pipeline based on these objects on the earth surface okay without which you will not be able uh, you will not be able uh, to get a particular location location of a point can be expressed as a distance from a physical object in a terrain it's always a distance if uh, many, many of times it is only distances that is mentioned but in case uh, there are certain systems where you can even look at even the directions then you have road network but this this particular kind of measurement is actually an approximate way of looking at 
uh, you are referencing. So when you are looking at a road network, the referencing system is often based on measurement of a distance from a given intersection. So keep this in mind, you are always measuring from an intersection. This will be, uh, this will give only the principal topology of a particular network, but it does not really give you the direction and the displacement in that particular network. Okay. Road network can therefore be presented only schematically. Okay. It, it, it can only be presented schematically. One example is shown on the right hand side, which is actually representing one of the very prominent regions in uh, Kolkata. Okay. The third, uh, uh, then the, when we look at relative georeferencing, there are huge amount, huge number of uh, disadvantages. Some of them are when we, uh, it's quite unstable. When we look at relative georeferencing, is quite unstable and vulnerable since the reference terrain are linked to the physical objects. So whether it is road, whether it is objects on the earth surface that we are trying to uh, look at, so these physical objects are uh, linked uh, when you are look, uh, looking at distance or direction the physical objects are taken into consideration which is actually uh, if there is a change in this physical objects then your direction and your uh, dimension changes in on your earth surface once the object is removed or moved the referencing system also is changed so that's what i meant then rerouting or straightening of roads if uh, certain things happens like that then the way you have your reference your old map may not fit into your the new uh, map. So then as a discreting uh, discrete georeferencing system. In this system the positions of phenomena are measured relative to fixed limited units of the surface of the earth. Okay, please be careful in this. The, in this system the positions of a phenomena okay, is are measured relative to fixed. You are relatively measuring okay, limited units of the Earth or sur surface of the earth. The system helps us to know the object is located within the specified reference unit, but when you are looking at the location within the reference unit, it is unknown. This is what is uh, the problem of uh, discrete referencing. So it, it tells, uh, it helps you to locate an object within a specified reference unit, but if the location within the reference unit is quite unknown. If you are taking this, uh, there is one building or let us say one parcel as a reference unit, within that reference unit, the water position is unknown. But with reference to that reference unit, around the positions is quite known. So that is one uh, disadvantage of this particular system. Then the object are linked to geography using reference units called as tags. So that is what uh, I meant, the tags, tags or units is nothing but uh, the discrete referencing system. It is also called as a tagging method, discrete referencing system, discrete method or a tagging method. Street addresses or mailing addresses are often used as simplified georeferencing systems. So this is the best and the easiest way of georeferencing. So everyone at every nook and corner can understand this kind of georeferencing. So when you look at uh, discrete georeferencing, uh, for example, if you are georeferencing, your mailing address uh, is also called as a geocoding. You are coding your earth, your point on the earth surface using a mailing address. So it is called geocoding. Okay? For example, if I have something like this, there is a sample mailing address that is shown here. Uh, uh, when you see this, this is a sample mailing address, it is Sports India Limited, you have a ground floor. Okay? This is all the attribute information that you have, but when you look at Salt Lake Electronic Complex, that is where a particular position is there. But what that is actually referring is it is in 730 uh, So which means that it is in Kolkata, in Bidanagar, in a Salt Lake city. So that's already now it is giving you, it's pinpointing you to a particular location, a small area in Kolkata. So once you have known uh, that particular and it says this particular pin code belongs to sector 5. So now you know where sector 5 is. So now it is much more smaller region. Now just with the block information and then the name of that particular uh, uh, building, you know where you have to deliver your post or your parcel. So that is what that is nothing but a geocoding. Okay? So 
mailing address may vary from country to country always it varies okay so mailing addresses is one of the most common technique for uh, using it using a geocoding uh, issues okay so please remember this uh, whenever we have to use uh, 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 any kind of uh, georeferencing in times of uh, discrete georeferencing most of the best methods you are used is in the form of a geocoding and they use uh, nothing but a mailing system then when we look at this kind of system it is it is a hierarchy of geographic identifiers that become more specific as you proceed from bottom to top of the address list okay for example when i am looking at here the first thing that uh, anywhere for example there is a parcel that is actually coming from uh, maybe uh, some part of uh, switzerland to india okay so now the first thing is india okay so now that uh, then is 7 triple zero nine one so now you are actually digging information from a country to a region now with the region you know which city right which city and which place in that particular city Bidanagar is uh, uh, another place so now in that Bidanagar okay Bidanagar area so you have a salt lake city so salt lake city is then looked at then it is sector 5 okay this particular pin code belongs to sector 5 so that is the first thing then then the digging will happen with the block the ep block it belongs to ep block so then is your sports india limited so that is what is called as a hierarchy always it that discrete referencing system is in terms of a hierarchy so it proceeds from bottom to top of the address so if the first address is looked at from the bottom then mail is progressively sorted in that order until it's it gets placed in a specific order that the postal carrier delivers it okay so uh, when we look at geocoding systems use information in an address to assign to assign it to various geographic features so please be careful we are assigning it to various geographic features that's how mailing address will become into a geographic address okay so uh, when we look at uh, one example here we have a typical mailing address in a reverse order so from the least specific to the most specific that gives you the hierarchy how it actually follows for example when when i am considering this here the first thing is uh, the first thing that we normally see is india and a country right so once we have seen that then the next point is we will look at the it is in the state of west bengal right so then we look at the six digit pin code then is the city then is the area then is the sub area that is the salt lake city then we look at the sector then that block then look at the building and then the floor name so now we are indirectly actually looking at uh, different uh, uh, hierarchies here so if you look at the final thing is the name of the business so for example if you are trying to uh, mail me if it is uh, uh, if this is my mailing address for example if i you just write this okay i tick karakpur and 721302 uh, the first thing that we see here is 721302 then the iit karakpur is the location where it has to reach then is the department then is the person's name where it has to be delivered so that is how this uh, discrete referencing system works okay now three major categories by which the discrete referencing system can be done is one is a postal code and area names that i have explained in my previous uh, slide even you can look at discrete referencing system using administrative zones and statistical unit normally uh, in terms of if you see the government uh, gazette years you will find out all this the grids and the map sheet this will learn when we are looking at what is a map and what are the different qual qualities quantities in a map okay so when we look at discrete referencing system it is uh, if you see this what number postal code and area name these are certain uh, examples for example i have shown here the entire kolkata city okay when you look at the entire kolkata city uh, uh, here you can see that these are the ones 
five, there is 70052 to 7006394 all of these are representations of the pin code of that particular city. Now we have wards different wards in the entire city if you see here the number of uh, the, the ward number also represents a particular geo coding of that particular uh, place. Then you have postal codes I have spoke and these area names for example the Tangra, the Gobra and you have Raja Bazaar. So the, all of these or the Salt Lake area so all of these are nothing but a geo coding into your map. So you are giving a referencing uh, way. So that referencing way may be understood by many. If I say Salt Lake City in Kolkata many of them will understand this particular place is uh, somewhere here ok. So if, if I say there is an uh, uh, DC block or uh, maybe a CD block or EF block so they will understand in the Salt Lake City there are certain blocks and e EF blocks can be reached by this point. So that is nothing but your coding your earth information or information about objects in terms of the uh, area name and or you can even say it as a word name word name is not easily seen uh, for example no one can understand that if you say that I am I belong to word number 100 ok because it is extremely difficult to remember if there if a city has 198 or 200 or 500 words so it is extremely difficult for them to understand or, or remember all of these names instead it is much easier to remember in terms of the area names ok. So, uh, yeah that is uh, that is about uh, uh, looking at the discrete referencing system. So, the next uh, thing that we would also look at here is uh, ok this is an example of an administrative zones and statistical units that is also a discrete referencing system. So, now for example, uh, the there are two images that you can see here one image uh, is in the form of uh, your boundary here in the purple color. So, this particular boundary is representing a Kolkata metropolitan area. So, now I am giving a area referencing here and if I see this, this is an Kolkata municipal area again an area referencing. Now, in that I have number of wards. So, this is ward referencing and each ward has a pin code ok. So, each pin code is nothing but again a pin code referencing. So, this is nothing but a discrete. I'll, I have just given several examples so that everyone understand how uh, geocoding is normally done in terms of using a GIS. So, this is uh, this is all for the grids and maps. You can see there are number of grids here. I will uh, uh, also tell you how this grids are located, what are different ways and what is for example, if it is 79A slash 4 what it actually represents in uh, what kind of uh, units it represents and uh, what is the amount of information that it stores about the earth surface uh, in this particular grid. I will uh, take, take this up when I am explaining the map systems and the IAC systems in my next class ok. So, uh, when we look at this the first thing that we looked at is we have elevation georeferencing which is called as geoids we have a relative ratio referencing where an offset measurement along the road we looked at. So, most importantly uh, please remember that geoids are the representation of the earth surface on the mean sea level otherwise you can just say that the mean sea level is represented as a geoid but maintaining the same gravitational potential across all continents or across the entire land surface of the earth. So, that is nothing but a geoid. And when you look at polar uh, georeferencing we did see we take a reference normally a north pole as a reference then we uh, we calculate what is the distance from the north pole or the directions from the north pole with an angle. So, that is called as a polar georeferencing. Then we looked at different geo uh, direct discrete uh, georeferencing systems and the importantly the mailing address and when we looked at the mailing address we understood it is more of a hierarchical uh, based approach. When I say hierarchical based approach it starts from the bottom uh, of the table and goes up to the top of the table ok. So, when uh, uh, when we are uh, when we actually look at uh, the entire mailing address for example, if you look at uh, any of the mailing address for the entire uh, region, uh, region of the land surface or the globe. So, it is extremely discrete for, for that particular region. So, you you would not have the same mailing address to any part of the earth surface 
then it uh, that's why it's called a discrete system and there is only one assigned code for a particular thing okay so if if uh, if you want to try uh, how discrete and how it can be easily accessed uh, i would suggest you write a write a, a, a particular postal uh, uh, form and uh, and uh, maybe you can post it with just your name and your pin code so that post will ca surely come back to you because you have mentioned the pin code and your name so if if you are a well known person that in that particular locality and a postman knows you it's easier okay for uh, them to locate you but uh, other information in case they don't know you they may need your area and other signatures in your postal code so now uh, in the next session the next part of what uh, ha has to be understood that is the coordinate system so now we have understood what is a geoid we looked at eleva elevation referencing next is the coordinate referencing so uh, once we have understood how the earth surface is what is the reference system for the earth surface that's a geoid now we move into the next part wherein we look at the coordinates once we look at the coordinates which means you are plugging in the entire system onto the earth surface then we look at the pro projection so we bring the 3d map to the 2d surface we already know how we are plugged in so put it uh, tie it onto the earth surface so that's how you tie the entire 3d surface to the 2d map so in the next class we look at the coordinate systems how to apply it how to use it and uh, what are what are the different ways of looking at it okay thank you very much let's meet in the next class